Hello everybody, and welcome back to Singing Simulator 2. My name is Steven Marcateros, and I am going to be your captain for today, and you'll see why that's important later on. But last episode, you guys said that you weren't really sure the controls of the game, you weren't sure how to download it, you weren't how, uh, sure about how to get the whole thing set up, and I will give you a, <coughs> a few notes about uh, everything that's going on with that. So, right now... There appears to be some sort of a strange compatibility error with AMD cards. I'm not really sure about that because I don't personally use any AMD cards in computers. I mean, we sort of have a little bit of an NVIDIA Intel bias going on, but that's like a whole other discussion for another video. And I uh, didn't really talk to Fred about this, but I believe that he is working on a patch for that. He's also working on some other cool features that we'll talk about later. Um, so if you have some sort of an AMD card, well... I might not be able to help you, but uh, but just check and try it for yourself and see if you can get it to work. So, I <coughs> just wanted to point that out for starters. Uh, another thing, to move around the game, the uh, the keys are W, A, S, and D. W makes you go up, A makes you go down, A or S makes you go down, A and D make you go left and right, and that's how you do that. And then scroll wheels to zoom in and out, which I know you guys love me doing, so I will make sure to use as much of that as I possibly can. Uh, so, I also want to go through how to quickly install the game, uh, because a lot of you, and I'm, when I mean a lot of you, I mean like virtually all of you at some point, uh, have asked about how you are supposed to install this. So, if you go to the website that's in the description, and thanks to OBS I can actually do this now, uh, if you download the game, it will come in a .zip format. This is kind of a common thing for game downloads, file downloads, especially Minecraft mods, that kind of stuff in these days. Uh, you'll, get, you'll get everything in zip files, so... Uh, I personally have a zip file manager, it's uh, WinRAR, uh, which you can get for free, sort of it's like a paid thing, but then like it's a trial, and then <coughs> you kind of have to like pay for it, but you don't. It's, it's weird how that works, but uh, you can get WinRAR, I can look that up for yourself. I believe 7-zip is another really popular option, but I'm not sure this is actually required, uh, because if you have something like WinRAR, you can just uh, basically do extract to this. And bam, there you go, you have a Windows uh, file folder. Or if you have Windows 10, I believe you can just open with uh, Windows Explorer, and then you virtually have this. You can just sort of copy it, go back out into this, and then paste. And there you go, now you have your own copy of the game. Oh, we've just opened up two copies of the game. Well, that is probably bad and will lead to something terrible happening later. But uh, yeah, so that's how you do that. I don't want to get these confused. I already forgot which one. Actually, uh, these are all... I don't need all any of these. Different folder I'm using. All right, so that's how you install the game. Then you just launch the uh, the .jar file. Okay, I'll go back in. But yeah, as you saw, you just do this. All the ships, uh, the ships are held in this folder. So you can just put everything in the ship pack that you download also in the description, which I believe may also come in a zip file, probably a folder. And then you can just click and add them into this folder, and bam, you have all of your ships, everything's in PNG files. You can make your own. It's awesome, and it is fantastic. But that's enough of that. Uh, last episode, I was challenged by the developer to build a airship. An a airship. I love my great use of English right there. <laughs> build a airship. Build an airship. All right? So, you know, an airship, kind of like a, um, what's it called? Uh, you know, like a dirigible, a, a zeppelin, a zeppelin, as they say in Europe. Uh, you know, it's they use helium or hydrogen gas, preferably helium, to you know provide lift over a great area, which then you can use to transport back and forth. Everyone knows what that is. Uh, so why don't I, sp <coughs> I spawn one in? So yes, I have gone to work uh, building up my greatest oval designs that end with a slightly uh, harsh end, and we have come up with what I call airship.png because when designing this, I had the greatest contradiction. I was going to say, okay, if I build the Hindenburg, do I have to put swastikas on it to call it the Hindenburg? And that was a discussion that I could not work out with anybody, so I decided to just call it airship, not put any on it, but just make it look like the Hindenburg. So, there you go. If you guys want me to build a Hindenburg, post down in the comments about what I should do to make it more Hindenburg style. And instead, I just included the words SSS on it, you know, sinking ship simulator, whatever else you can you can acronyme, acronyze in acronym acronymize that into okay so let's spawn this in and as you'll note uh just like basically anything else in this game it will crash down to the ground and begin to flood with water fantastically there we go oh uh, look at you beautifully flooding uh that's amazing uh but yeah that isn't really the point of why we have this stuff made you kind of have to mess around with the settings a little bit uh so as i'll point out to you right now we have water weight and buoyancy settings so water weight uh, sort of makes things sink faster, uh, like so, or sink basically not at all because it basically has no weight. 
Now I'll leave that on, and buoyancy is like a strange counter that I don't understand, because you can put buoyancy up, and suddenly things start to get funky, especially if you put water weight down, things will begin to fly around, you put water weight up, and it's like a multiplier to the water weight. It's, it's very strange, and I don't particularly understand how it works, uh, but you generally want to have them balanced, or you'll see really weird things happen. Uh, so yeah, that is uh, that is the destroyed zinking of that, so let's delete it. And let's set our settings, okay, delete tool, there we go. And let's uh, set our settings so that we have something. So if we turn all of these off uh, like that, and we bring it out and uh, click on the window again, and we spawn this in, it shouldn't move. Yeah, see, it kind of just hangs in the air because there's no forces dragging it down and there's no forces lifting it up. However, however, Sinking Simulator is a weird game in the fact that its physics engine doesn't really work ever in the way that you would expect it to. Things fly everywhere, things tend to, you know, just go completely crazy for no apparent reason other than that there's some flaw in numbers or there's some initial movement that has set everything apart, and you will watch airships like this, or anything for that matter, literally sail out of the water at lightning speed and just begin to play their own different game. Yes, there you go, watching the Hindenburg, or airship, fly around at a ridiculous speed, breaking into multiple pieces, you know, launching across the sky, self-destructing into the water. Ah, this game. This game is really something. And I'd also like to know, just the, the beautiful tiny little pieces that make up these, uh, these airships and all the vehicles like that, if we add some water weight to it, they'll fall back to the ground, and they will pretty much obliterate themselves, uh, just like that. Oh, actually, that one stuck together quite well. And then you can sort of watch the tail end of that sink, which isn't really how an airship is supposed to work. It's supposed to be much more graceful, much more gentle. And this can be aided by the move tool, another fantastic tool which allows you to move things around, to pick them up, and uh, watch as the game tries to comprehend how uh, it's supposed to let the water pour back out. I know what is actually cool about this. If you lift something out of the water, the water will just disappear out of it entirely. But, oh, let's see if I can try to recreate this right now. Uh, you can't really pick things up by the back. If we can flip something over at some point, which I will try to do right now by smashing it into the water. There we go. We can see some really weird features. See, notice how it's flooding upside down right now. Yeah. Uh, this game doesn't really account for gravity. <laughs> <laughs> so you get really, really strange stuff like flooding upside down, and I don't know, Fred, it's it's pretty crazy, man. It is pretty darn crazy. Uh, so that is that is something to be noted, that if you flip stuff over, it will sink upside down, and everything sinks from the same direction. But if we put everything back down at lowest possible settings, and we spawn it in, and we get the move tool out, well, yes, now we can begin to control uh, our airship, and watch it start to dubstep a little bit. I'm starting to think this is some sort of like common physics engine bug, because if I remember correctly, there's a few fundamental forces of nature, and one of them is vibration, um, you know, because things tend to, you know, if they stay vibrating, it's like an equal transaction of forces and whatnot, and it'll, the vibration will continue, and if there's like resonance or something, it'll like destroy it, but it's, it's just so weird how things in this game do that. That was weird, actually. I've never, I've never seen it do that when I had the settings like this. So uh, let me try that again. Normally, it doesn't, it doesn't just blow up like that. So I'll try that one more time uh, with the move tool. Uh, so yeah, you can sort of make things move. You can sort of set them back. Uh, you can really control your airship. We'll get it over water for some perspective. You know, you can send it sailing through the air. Uh, you can send it not sailing through the air. Slow down, Hindenburg. Slow down. All right, all right, uh, we're losing control of this. All right, max tool size. Max tool size, oh crap, we ripped it in half. All right, yes, lots of structural failures with the Hindenburg. Um, most notably, it likes to just separate. But yeah, uh, that's the Hindenburg. It's a it's a cool physics experiment in this game uh, where you can basically watch a dirigible sort of uh, epically fail very, very slowly. I can put a little bit of water weight on to try and control it and then use the move tool to pick it back up, but that's not as much fun. Especially if you're using too strong of a move tool, you'll just rip it right in half. I hate it when I do that. There we go. So it's sort of like there's a little bit of gravity that's controlling it, but there isn't there isn't a huge amount of gravity. Well, I mean, this game, everything just begins to launch. Oh man, Fred. I think I think Fred's problem with this challenge was the uh, was the fact that he uh, he tried to challenge me to build an airship. 
uh, when the game isn't really supposed to handle airship physics uh, at all. It's a sinking simulator, a ship sinking simulator, as noted by the title of this video. So it's a little bit weird to be seeing airships uh, in this context. Uh, let's sink it like a normal ship, though, uh, just, uh, you know, out of spite uh, and trying to actually get its purpose correct. So if we pierce it, you know, it floods like any any regular ship. Uh, but yeah, this is the uh, the Hindenburg. It's a it's a neat little nifty ship, supposedly an airship as some call it, uh, that uh, doesn't uh, doesn't really work well in this game unless we had other features. What I would like to do, what I think would be a really cool thing we could do in this game, is if we could set it ablaze. Oh, we could watch the fire shoot out of the back of it. We could blow up the Hindenburg. We could kill thirty six people. Okay, maybe I'm uh, going a little bit crazy, but uh, I personally think that would be one of the coolest things ever, is to finally have fire in a game where fire plays such a big role in sinking ships. But that's that's on Fred, you know, we don't we don't need to criticize Fred. I mean, this only goes on like your resume, man. It's a fantastic little game that you developed. Fred works at his own speed, which is um, Fred's speed, I guess we'll call it. It's weird. We sort of we sort of don't do anything with this game for six months, and we come back to it and like do like a quick, nice development run where it's like, all right, man, we need new features now, and, and that's how we work off of that. But uh, no, he does a great job with the game. Uh, it's fantastic. I never thought I would see it recreated in this sort of fashion. I never thought I'd be building airships in it, because as I remember, the original Sinking Simulator did not handle airship physics too well. It couldn't even really handle boat physics at all. Uh, so yes, this recreation of the game, absolutely fantastic. It's nice to see the Hindenburg sinking to the ground in a situation I never thought I would ever see the Hindenburg in. Let's see, Floor Heights lower that. Hindenburg's a big ship. Oh, it's just so beautiful. Everything in this game is it's so beautiful. I could have added more color to it, but I figured if I added any amount of red to it, I'd hear complaining. So I, I didn't. I didn't at all. Uh, it'd be so fantastic to put some swastikas right here, right on the back where they're meant to be. Just don't want to bring up that, that imagery. I don't want my YouTube channel to be banned in Germany. I'm not I'm not 100% sure about the use of swastikas in Germany anymore, I'll, albeit I know that there's some very strange laws uh, regarding with what can and cannot be shown. So... Uh, don't don't feel like hiring a lawyer to work my way around uh, showing this YouTube video in Germany. I also don't want to get this video blocked for my German viewers, but uh, that's a whole debate you guys can launch down in the comment section about what they should or should not be able to see. Oh, any any time I, I bring up Nazi Germany, which is which is very often because Nazi Germany was very relevant to lots of uh, ships and airships that were constructed, many planes, uh, many different things, <coughs> submarines, U-boats, that type of stuff. It's just it, they have to bring it up way too much. Uh, not we. Well, I guess not really way too much, but I have to bring it up more often than you you would imagine for something of this uh, caliber. Ah, uh, yeah. And you'll note how strange the game's flooding physics are. Everything is flooding to the left. That's fun. But that's the Hindenburg, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Sinking Simulator. It's a shorter episode. Uh, next time, I actually have no idea what to build because it's the first time I haven't had any super challenge. But I'm going to guess we're going to be going back to some really big boats and what we can do with that. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this episode of Sinking Simulator 2, don't forget to write, comment, and subscribe. My name is Steven Marcateros, and I will see you guys next time.